except for they say, oh, I smell some burnt cannabis. Does the smell of cannabis give police the right to search vehicles without a warrant? The smell alone isn't enough for probable cause for police to search a vehicle. Big news, and guess what? We all know that they weren't searching the entire car to find a little half-smoked joint. Now, there is one more related case the state Supreme Court has to issue a ruling on, and that's the smell of raw cannabis. Artist is hopeful that decision will come down later this month. All right, guys, we're back with another reaction, and I can see the headline of this news article, and uh, I'm excited to react to this one. This has been big news, sort of a long time coming for myself and others in the criminal defense world. Um, changes things a lot for people here in Illinois, but but really, uh, all 50 states, uh, you know, can maybe learn from this. Uh, so yeah, let's let's get to this reaction. This is good. The Illinois Supreme Court ruled today the smell of burnt cannabis alone does not justify police to search a vehicle without a warrant. Yes. Jenna Webster news. joins us to break down the ruling and why a defense attorney says it's a win for privacy rights. Of course. Yeah, John, the state Supreme Court was unanimous in its decision this morning with one judge not taking part, saying laws regarding cannabis have changed so much. The smell alone isn't enough for probable cause for police to search a vehicle. Good morning, all. The question at the center of this case for the Illinois State Supreme Court, does the smell of cannabis give police the right to search vehicles without a warrant? Big news. Yep, I've been reading all about this. This just came down the other day, literally. Good, timely. This is very timely. This is maybe three days old, This, this two, day, two or three days old, this information. So, um, yes, I agree that it is a very big win for Illinois drivers on um, privacy. It stems from a 2020 traffic stop on I-80 in Henry County. Illinois State Police pulled over Ryan Redmond for an Henry unsecured County. license plate and driving three miles per hour over the speed limit. The officer uh, alleged that uh, he smelled the odor of burnt cannabis, and on that basis alone, he searched the motor vehicle. The trooper found... Henry County. I know a little bit about Henry County. I do not practice there. I don't even know if I've ever been there. Um, but man, it's a little county out west, way west of Chicago, uh, Illinois border of Iowa. And uh, man, they have a reputation for stopping people. That's for sure. That reputation, as a guy here in, all the way over in Chicago, I know about the reputation of Henry County and how they stop. It was sort of a, you know, they claim it's a corridor, right? Where if you're coming from California or Colorado or anywhere out west, you're coming through Henry County to get to Chicago. So it's a corridor for drug trafficking. And yes, Illinois State Police and maybe the local county sheriff there, I don't know, are super aggressive and stopping people. Look at three miles an hour over and they magically got their way into the car. So I think this is a perfect case uh, for them to take for somebody defense counsel to take to the Illinois Supreme Court um, because yes a lot of aggressive police tactics out there in Henry County generally speaking one gram of cannabis in a plastic bag Redmond was charged with unlawful possession however according to the officer he didn't smell marijuana on Redmond and didn't see any signs of impairment once cannabis became legalized in the state of Illinois the odor of cannabis became the aroma of legality. Yep. Attorney James Murtis argued in court the officer did not have probable cause for the search. Our right of privacy is at stake. And what the Illinois Supreme Court is saying is that probable cause is necessary to invade that privacy. Yes. And because cannabis is now recreationally legal, that is the smell of that legal thing is not probable cause to search the vehicle. It, it, it can still be, I'm not talking about DUIs here. This is not about DUIs, right? Um, this is about the basis for searching the vehicle. Let me analogize this to alcohol a little bit, right? An, an officer's never been able to say, I smell alcohol, get out of the car, I'm gonna search your entire car for alcohol. And whether I'm right or wrong, whether I find alcohol or not, it doesn't matter. I'm, I get to search your entire vehicle because I smell alcohol. That is not the law. But it was allowed for cannabis, right? I smell burned cannabis. Get out. I'm going to search your entire vehicle. And, and truthfully, it didn't even matter if they found it or not. And so that's why officers... The argument is from defense attorneys like me. The argument is that officers would use that. They'd go, 
I smell burnt cannabis. Whether they do or not, can't tell, can't tell on camera, right? I smell burnt cannabis, get out, handcuff you, search your entire car. And guess what? We all know that they weren't searching the entire car to find a little half-smoked joint. They were looking for other things, guns primarily. That's almost always what they're actually hoping to find in that car, not a half smoke joint or large amounts of other, you know, drugs and stuff, right? But it was a precursor to, to get in a car and search it and find a firearm is how that was often used. So all this did was align it to be like alcohol, saying, well, they're both legal. Can burn, can, cannabis is legal to consume. Alcohol is legal to consume. Now, granted, you can't get a DUI with it. You can't be driving. Um, but they're both legal to consume. And so why can, with one, the cannabis search the entire car, but with alcohol, you can't search the entire car. So they just align those. And probable cause doesn't exist when someone's engaged in perfectly legal conduct. The high court ruling the smell of burnt cannabis alone isn't enough cause for a warrantless search saying cannabis laws have changed drastically in the state. In 2020, state lawmakers legalized possession of small amounts. In its opinion, the court writing, quote, there are now a myriad of situations where cannabis can be used and possessed and the smell resulting from that legal use and possession is not indicative of the commission of a criminal offense. I mean, you get it. Um, you could have a passenger that smoked marijuana and you, you did not, the driver. And you're driving and your passengers don't or in the back seat or whatever and smell, smell cannabis, that's totally legal. There's nothing illegal about that whatsoever. And in the past, not only could the officer just question you about that, but they could literally just go search your entire car for that. That was the problem. And, you know, uh, the, of course, the Supreme Court's not going to say it, but, but, you know, it doesn't take a genius to know that, that you know, uh, officers are, are figure that out, and then they, they, that can be a pretense, right? I smell cannabis. Everyone out. I'm searching the whole thing. Well, there is one more related case the state Supreme Court has to issue a ruling on, and that's the smell of raw cannabis. That stems from a Whiteside County traffic stop. Artist is hopeful that decision will come down later this month. John. All right, Jenna, thank you. We reached out to Illinois State Police to find out how this ruling might change its standard practices. A spokesperson says they're still reviewing the court's ruling and declined to comment further at this time. Raw cannabis is a little different, right? Yeah, this is, you know, the Supreme Court or all courts love to narrowly construe their rulings, right? They don't want to make these big sweeping changes. They, they like to do it a case at a time, right? And so it makes sense that this is only about burnt cannabis. Raw cannabis is sort of a different set of things, right? Um, you know, then it's where did you purchase that and how is it being kept and contained? And, and there's laws around that. So raw cannabis, different smell, different sort of ruling. I'm sure that's coming next. Uh, this one, burnt cannabis, um, is a really, um, really good ruling for, uh, you know, drivers and, and privacy. And I think Illinois altogether. Yeah, no, no, I get it. We do a lot of DUIs. We talk about DUIs a lot on this on this channel. This is this ruling really has not much to do with DUIs. Nothing really to do with DUIs. You know, if if an officer smells burnt cannabis, just like if they smell alcohol, they could still always question the driver. Uh, likely get them, you know, depending on what they're observing, get them out of the car and have put them through standard field sobriety tests. It's still illegal to be high and drive. Um, so this is just strictly about probable cause to search a vehicle without a warrant. That is what this is about. It doesn't really affect DUIs necessarily. So um, let's just talk very briefly about, um, this is only for Illinois. Federally, cannabis is still not legalized, right? But Illinois did legalize it. This is only applies to, to Illinois. It's going to be different in Wisconsin and Indiana and Iowa and really all 49 other states are going to interpret these things differently. Um, this is an Illinois state Supreme Court ruling. I, I will say, you know, here's my most sort of cynical, you know, view. I'm not anti-police, but this is... Uh, this is one interpretation, and it's that it'll change some, some police work, especially 
inner city police work for a certain subsection of people, obviously. You know what I'm talking about. I've seen officers have no basis to search a car, zero legal basis to search a car, except for they say, oh, I smell some burnt cannabis. And now, previously, prior to this, from 2000 to now 2004, for those past four years, they've now, that is a legal key, a legal unlock to now go search that whole vehicle. And, you know, I, I'm, I've watched these things on body one camera my, for my clients too. And, you know, I don't know if they smelled cannabis or not, but I know that they didn't find any cannabis in the car, but they did find a gun or they did find, you know, something else, right, that caused uh, this person to get charged with something, right? So, so you, you got to question like, wait a minute, did they actually smell cannabis? And, you know... That is what's going to change here is not all police officers, not all departments, but so I'm certain that that officers have just, I'm talking some specific officers, I'm not painting with a broad brush here, some specific officers have claimed to have smelled burnt cannabis so they could search vehicles and they can no longer do that. But yeah, if there are cases where there was a surge based on the smell of burnt cannabis alone, those cases will be dismissed um, by, by the state's attorney's office. So good news for, for some people who, uh, who have some pending cases. All right, guys, this is good news. Like I said, uh, Illinois legalized recreational marijuana about four years ago. This was a ripple effect. Like it left a gap in the law, right? It's legal to consume cannabis, but yet they were still using that that totally legal activity to search your car. Like you could be totally legit, totally legal under the law, yet officers can still search your car. That's a, that's a problem. That's a gap in sort of the law. And it's great to see the Illinois Supreme Court making a ruling that's going to close that gap. So um, love to see this. It's good for privacy, good for Illinois drivers. And really, it's good as recreational marijuana becomes more and more legalized across all 50 states. Uh, it's good to see the, uh, the, the, the law is getting corrected on this. So thanks for watching.